Home workout. You get home workout. Yeah, yeah. Let's get started right away. And away we go. You should be on page, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, one, where am I? I'm on page 120, 129. Hooray, page 129. 129. That's all the homework we have today. So let's do it real quick and get out the way. Whew. Now you will solve the problem from the previous page by finding a common, did not, a common numerator. Okay. What is an equivalent fraction for 2 over 100 that has a numerator of 8? What? It's actually not that hard. They want a numerator of 8. We have a numerator of 2. So we need to multiply, multiply, multiply. How can we get 2 to become 8? 2 times what? They want it to be 8. So how can we make that 2 and 8? 2 times 4. And whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. You have to. That's just a rule in fraction land. So 2 times 4 is 8. Good. That's what they want. And then 100 times 4. Well, that's not hard. It's just 1 times 4 with a couple extra zeros at the end. 1 times 4 is 4. There. A couple extra zeros. There's our new fraction. 8 over 400. One model is divided into four equal parts, and the other is divided into ten equal parts. Which one has smaller parts? The one divided into 400 or the one divided into ten? Let's see. Um, well, that's how big a part is for that one, and that's how big a part is for that one. So which one has smaller parts? The one divided into 400 or the one divided into 10? Take a look and you will see. Smaller parts, the one divided into 400. And you might, that, you might go, wait, wait, 400's not smaller than 10. What are you talking about, Mr. No, no, no. No, no, no. They're not asking you which number is smaller. They're not saying, oh, what's smaller, 400 or 10. They're saying which pieces are smaller. And if you cut something into 400 pieces, yeah, you're going to have really small pieces. But if you cut something into 10 pieces, they won't be nearly as small. Alrighty. Shade eight pieces of each model. So go ahead and take your little pencil. And we're going to shade eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should shade about that much in that one. And then shade eight pieces in the other model. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's all we had to do for that one. You have to shade all of that. I'm not going to really color it in because it's hard with like a computer mouse to really like shade it all in. I just don't feel like doing it. But th about that much versus about that much. Which model has the greater area shaded? Is it the one with this? The one with, uh, with uh, 8 out of 400? or 8 out of 100 because this, this one right here is 8 out of 400 and this one over here is 8 out of, well not 8 out of 100, sorry, it's 8 out of uh, 10 sorry, that's what I meant to say, 8 out of 10 so which model has the greater area shaded? which one has more shading? Uh, well, that one has that much, and that one has all of that. So even though 8 tenths, it, you might not think it's bigger, it actually has more shading. So the model with 8 out of 10, that's the one that has uh, the greater area shaded. <clears throat> 
Which fraction is greater? Four out of, sorry, eight out of 400 or eight out of 10, eight tenths? Well, it's obvious which one is greater by now, isn't it? Isn't it? This one has way more shaded. Plus, I told you last time, if the numerators are the same, whichever denominator is smaller has bigger pieces. So uh, hopefully by now, after every... Wow, that was ugly, sorry. Hopefully by now, after everything we're, we're talking about, you know that 8 tenths is the greater one. So 8 out of 10. Look at the denominators, the bottom numbers, of 8 over 400, 8 over 10. When two fractions have the same numerator and different denominators, how do you know which one is greater? Explain. The smaller denominator is greater because it has, uh oh, gonna have to extend this page a little bit, because it has smaller pieces. That means that more of the whole gets shaded in. So that's what we're talking about up here. Don't just don't just do the homework and try to finish it. Try to understand it. Try to understand the homework. 8 out of 400 versus 8 out of 10. This one's much bigger. Even though 10 is smaller than 400, a 10 in the denominator makes the pieces bigger because there's less pieces. And when that happens, oh wait, here real quick, sorry, not smaller pieces, less pieces, sorry. The smaller denominator is greater because it has less pieces. That means that more of the whole gets shaded in. So that's what's happening right here. More of that gets shaded in than that over there, and that's why that's greater. Real quick, if you copy me before, when I said because it has smaller pieces, cross off smaller and put less. Less is what we meant, less pieces. All right, we're almost done. Mel's tomato plant is 8 over 12 of a foot tall. Her pepper plant is 3 fourths of a foot tall. Compare the heights of the plants using a symbol. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We should find some common denominator action. So we've got 8 over 12, and we've got 3 over 4. And they want to know which one's greater, and we have to compare using a symbol. You know, the, the, these symbols is what they're talking about, which one's bigger. Now, you shouldn't compare them right away. You should not. You shouldn't look at 8 twelfths and 3 fourths and just go, Oh, I know which one's bigger. Du -du 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 -du. You need to look at them separately. You need to look at them different. And you should go, okay, 8 twelfths versus 3 fourths. Which one's greater? Make a common denominator. Make a common denominator. So 3 fourths to 8 twelfths can 4 become 12. Always ask yourself that. Can the smaller one somehow become the bigger one? Can 4 become 12? And 4 can become 12 through multiplication. Think about it. 4 times what would give you 12? You know your times tables, don't you? 4 times, four times 3 can get you 12. And whatever you do on the bottom, you must also do on the top. So you multiplied by 3 on the bottom. Now please also multiply by 3 on the top. And you'll get 3 times 3 equals 9. And what we've done here is we've created a brand new fraction, an equivalent fraction. We have 9 twelfths. We used to have 3 fourths. But you know what? Forget about him. Now we have 9 twelfths. So put 9 twelfths right there. And now it becomes so easy to see which one's bigger. Because look, they both have 12 on the bottom. That's even Steven. But look at the top, look at the numerator. The 8 and the 9 are not the same. As it, isn't it clear which one's greater, 8 or 9? Nine? 9 is greater. So 
remember, where did our 9 twelfths come from? It came from 3 fourths. So 9 twelfths is greater, 3 fourths is greater. Because 9 twelfths came from 3 fourths. So 3 fourths is the big one. Okay? Compare the fractions 3 fifths and 5 tenths. No problem. Same thing. We have 3 fifths. And think about this. The more you can do this without me spoiling it for you, the better. We really wish that um, the numbers on bottom were the same. Man, we wish that was true. We wish so bad that they were the same. Now think about it. With 3 fifths, can't we make the bottom number, the denominator, the same as over there? Can't 5 become 10 through multiplication? It can. 5 times, 5 times what equals 10? 5 times 2 equals 10. Right? And then whatever you do on the bottom, again, do it on the top also, the numerator. So 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. So now we've, we know that 3 fifths equals 6 tenths. We know that because we just made an equivalent fraction. We learned that last week. So now that we have an equivalent fraction for 3 fifths, it's easy to see which one's bigger. What's bigger? 6 tenths or 5 tenths? Well, the bottoms are the same. So look at the top. 5 and 6. Which one's bigger? 5 or 6? 6 is bigger. So that means 3 fifths is the bigger fraction. Because remember, remember, where did 6 tenths come from? It came from changing 3 fifths. So that, that means 3 fifths, since 3 fifths is 6 tenths, you know, they're the same. That means 3 fifths is bigger than 5 tenths. Man, I... You know, since I'm talking to myself in a video, I can't tell if you guys are like, oh yeah, I see that. Or if it's like, what? This is getting hard for me. But you know what? You know what? Just stick with it. We'll keep practicing. The practice isn't over yet. I promise. If you keep trying, you will get better. Alright guys, that's all we have for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for doing your homework with me. Bye.